Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at interference by division of amplitude. So let's get started. Now, our first main type of interference that we're going to look at in advanced tire physics is called interference by division of amplitude. And it says to understand interference by division of amplitude, it is necessary to grasp a number of other concepts relating to light. And that's what this video is going to be about. So we're going to look at several things, including optical path difference, phase changes on reflection, and phase difference in optical path difference, as understanding these concepts will help you go on and look at applications of interference by division of amplitude, things like thin films, looming of lenses, and thin wedge interference. So if we look at optical path difference first of all, it says you will recall from higher physics the role played by path difference in producing interference from two coherent waves. When the path difference is equal to a whole number of wavelengths, that is path difference equals m lambda, a maximum, i.e. constructive interference is produced. And when path difference equals m plus a half lambda, that is, when path difference is not equal to a whole number of wavelengths, it would be a non-integer multiple of wavelengths, then a minimum, i.e. destructive interference, is produced. And I'll just show you a quick simulation to remind you of that. So you'll see here we've got two sources of waves, S1 and S2, let's say they're slits, and we've got waves passing from slit S1 to point P, and from slit S2 to point P as well. And right now you can see that point P is directly in between the two sources of waves, and that means that the two waves are travelling the exact same distance to get to point P. And you can see that when they reach point P, the two waves are actually overlapping constructively because we have crest meets crest and trough meets trough. So that means that would be our central maximum or first point of constructive interference there. So if we drew straight lines to show you the distances travelled by the two waves, you'll see they are both the exact same size. So we have two lines of the exact same length here. So point P is a maximum, a point of constructive interference, so the path difference would be equal to a whole number of wavelengths. And in actual fact, the path difference is zero here because the two waves are travelling the same distance. So the difference between the distance travelled is zero. If we think about point Q here though, the waves travelling from source S2 are now travelling further to get to point Q than the waves travelling from S1. And we can draw our straight lines to show the difference between the distance travelled. And this green line actually shows that difference here. So we could say the path difference here is not zero and we could work out whether it's going to be a whole number of wavelengths or a non-integer multiple of wavelengths and we can do that by looking at what the waves are doing when they meet point Q. So you can see we get crest meets trough at this point so the waves are half a cycle out of phase and therefore half a wavelength out of phase and we can say we have our first minimum here or first point of destructive interference where the waves are half a wavelength out of phase and that means the path difference would equal lambda over two or half a wavelength. Going back to the notes it says that if a light wave passes through a transparent medium, the wave will be affected. When a wave passes through a medium such as glass, its wavelength decreases due to refraction. Remember, speed and wavelength both change during refraction of light, but frequency remains unchanged. So here we can see that a wave travelling through the air is completely unaffected, but the wave travelling through the glass bunches up when it's within the glass and then spreads out again when it's beyond the glass. And we can see the waves will decrease not just in wavelength as shown inside the glass here, but also in speed due to refraction going on. So remember when light passes through a more dense medium, it's going to slow down and its wavelength decreases, but the frequency stays the same. We've then got a few new terms here. So we have something called the geometric path length, and we say the geometric path length in the glass is equal to capital L, but the optical path length is equal to N glass times L. That is, we could say the optical path length is equal to the refractive index of the more dense material times the geometric path length, which was the length L. So in the example shown above, it says although the waves are in phase approaching the glass, they are exactly out of phase leaving the glass. This is due to the increased optical path length caused by the wave travelling through the glass. So looking back at the picture, you can see the waves are in phase to begin with. You've got crest and crest and trough and trough, crest and crest and so on, all lining up. And then when the waves pass through the glass, the waves are bunching up because their wavelength is decreasing. And then when the waves exit here, we're getting crest meets trough, trough meets crest, crest meets trough and so on. So due to the increased optical path length of this second wave through the glass, it's now completely out of phase with the first wave. So this light wave has been affected by the presence of the glass. Now I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this. So you'll see here we've got waves from two sources, S1 and S2, and the waves from S1 are actually the ones passing through the more dense material, the perspex here, whereas the waves from S2 are just travelling through air as normal. And you can see that the waves are in phase to begin with, but then the waves from S1 are then bunched up because their wavelength decreases as it passes into the more dense medium, the perspex, and then the waves spread out again, i.e. their wavelength increases when they leave the perspex block. And if we pause it, you can see the light from S1 is in phase to begin with. We've got crest meets crest and trough meets trough and so on. But then when the light from S1 
this one passes through the Perspex block, it's then coming out here so that the two waves are out of phase. And that's just what we saw in the notes there. And if we turn the text on here, you can see the geometrical path length L is the length of the Perspex block. And the optical path length, remember, we're saying is equal to the refractive index of the material times the geometrical path length. So in this case, we could say it's n perspex times L. Going back to the notes now, we have something else called optical path difference, which we can call OPD for short. And we say the optical path difference is the difference in the two optical path lengths, which in this case is given by OPD equals n glass times L minus n air times L. But since the refractive index of air is effectively 1.0 or 1, then that means we can simplify this to optical path difference equals n glass L minus L. So we've essentially got our optical path difference is equal to our optical path length, n glass L, minus the geometric path length, which is just L. And it says we can write an expression for optical path difference similar to the one for optical path length above. So we can say the optical path difference is equal to the refractive index times the geometric path difference. Or in symbol form, we can say OPD is equal to n times GPD where GPD is just our geometric path difference. It then says to determine if interference occurs, the optical path lengths must be considered. A maximum occurs when OPD, the optical path difference, is equal to a whole number of wavelengths, m lambda, where m is an integer 0, 1, 2 and so on. And we can say that a minimum occurs when optical path difference is equal to m plus a half lambda, that is a non-integer number of wavelengths. Where OPD is the optical path difference measured in meters, m is an integer with no units, and lambda is the wavelength measured in meters. And we'll see how to use these equations in the worked examples. The next thing we need to be aware of when thinking about interference by division of amplitude is the idea of phase changes on reflection. So it says that when a wave is travelling in a less dense medium and reflects from an interface with a more dense medium, for example travelling from air to glass, it undergoes a phase change of pi radians. And this is just a rule that we need to remember. But when a wave is travelling in a more dense medium and reflects from an interface with a less dense medium, for example travelling from glass to air, it does not undergo any phase change. So if we look at the picture here, let's say we have a wave going from air to glass, then our instant wave would look like this, and when the wave reflects from the air-glass boundary, it's going to be inverted by 180 degrees, i.e. it's undergoing a phase change of pi radians. So this wave will reflect to look completely inverted or opposite to the original wave. However, let's say our wave was starting inside the glass and it was travelling from glass to air, then you'll see that our instant wave would look like this until it meets the glass to air boundary, at which point it will reflect inside the glass and undergo no phase change, because we're going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. So you'll see the wave reflects with the exact same shape of wave as the original wave. And I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this. So if we look at the bottom right hand corner here, you'll see we've got some more dense medium, like glass for example, and we've got waves instant on the glass. So when the waves come in, they're going to be reflected from the air to glass boundary, but also transmitted through the glass as well, at which point they could be reflected from the inside of the glass. So we can think about the waves being reflected from the first surface and the second surface. So for the first waves here, we can say that because they're going from air to glass, i.e. from a less dense to a more dense medium, then these waves are undergoing a phase change of pi radians, and that's why they come out looking opposite to the way they went in. So let's just see if we can step the motion a wee bit to see this phase change of pi for this wave. So on reflection, you can see the wave is getting inverted there. Whereas if we think about the transmitted light here, which is going to reflect off the second surface, if I again step the motion, we'll see what happens to the wave when it goes from glass to air. So this time we should see no phase change as the wave approaches this surface. So we've got phase change of pi radians on reflection going from a less dense to a more dense medium, but remember no phase change occurs when we go from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. And we'll use this idea when we look more closely at the applications of interference by division of amplitude. Lastly, going back to the notes, we're going to finish by looking at phase difference and optical path difference. And these are now two things that we've seen in the interference subtopic. So it says the phase difference is related to the optical path difference by this relationship here. So we say that phase difference is equal to 2 pi over lambda times the optical path difference. And remember we said that the phase difference phi was equal to 2 pi x over lambda, where x was the difference between the two points on our wave. But this time we're swapping out the x for optical path difference. And we can say here that lambda is the wavelength in a vacuum. It then says that a coherent source of waves will produce constructive interference if there is an optical path difference equivalent to a whole number 
number of wavelengths, i.e. the waves will be in phase, where the phase difference is 0, 2 pi and 4 pi radians and so on. And the coherent source of waves will also produce destructive interference if there is an optical path difference equivalent to half a wavelength, 3 over 2 wavelengths, 5 over 2 wavelengths, etc., i.e. the waves will be completely out of phase. And that is when there is a phase difference of phi equal to pi, 3 over pi or 5 over pi radians and so on. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.